After hours, Seattle glows. Its halo reaches the clouds, and from all angles, the skyline sparkles. At street level, a spectrum illuminates the darkness. Higher up, gaps between the buildings are filling in with shimmering newcomers, altering an iconic view. Through the decades, downtown Seattle has evolved into a major city with a distinctive skyline. The 1960s were all about the Space Needle, which was soon joined by other high-rises. The Columbia Tower took over in the 80s. This was the view from West Seattle around the millennium. And here's that perspective today. Seattle is bigger and brighter these days, and the growth is creating new challenges for city planners who are trying to keep up with all the changes while making sure this concrete range still dazzles onlookers from all angles. Architects have quite a bit of room to flex their creative muscles in Seattle, and they're doing just that. One of the newest additions to the skyline is the sleek 43-story F5 tower, which is nearly complete. All aboard! <laughs> It's like Six Flags, you know. The team constructing the skyscraper took me up to the top this spring to explain the thinking behind the design and how it fits into the city as a whole. That's pretty spectacular. Alan Stelmacher with ZGF Architects is the lead designer. It reflects the neighboring buildings and so it helps break up the monolithic kind of core of downtown. He calls it a chameleon, which can blend in when it wants to and still make an impression from afar. If the building were a person, who would it be? A photo of Audrey Hepburn actually inspired the building's slinking silhouette. In the 40 years I've lived here, I've never seen this pace of development and it's palpable, it's, you can feel it. Mark Hinshaw is an architect and critic who's been writing about Seattle's skyline for nearly 30 years. It's not trying to show off like some cities do. They seem to be grasping for some distinctive, one-of-a-kind, iconic structure. We have a kind of a collective idea here of creating a whole, not a bunch of individual parts. It's a critical aspect of the, the downtown review. Lisa Rutzik is Seattle's design review program manager. Her office sorts through a blitz of building proposals and makes sure they fall within the city's design guidelines, which specifically state that a downtown project should enhance the skyline. Architects should consider how a structure looks from all angles as people are driving into downtown or sailing in on a ferry. We also want to make sure that we're not contributing overly to light pollution in the evening sky. So oftentimes now we'll see designs that are um, seeking to keep the lighting confined within the building footprint and not um, upward into the sky. Planners like to see a tower that tapers as it gets higher. They're looking for unique patterns, textures, and colors. Rutzik says they're seeing a lot more of that these days, in part because Seattle's attracting attention from out-of-town architecture firms eager to make an impression in one of the country's fastest growing big cities. The other thing that's distinctive about this city is that no one building has a huge sign. And you do see that in a few other cities where a corporation has essentially branded the skyline, and we don't do that. There are plenty more new buildings on the way. Here are just a few of the designs currently in the works, soon to rise among the towers of Seattle and light up the sky.